your average gym bro's financial freedom plan. My journey starts here. In 2018, I was sad and depressed. My physical health, mental health and spiritual health were non-existent. My typical weekends were nights out binge drinking and fast food was a regular part of my diet. Then I decided to change. I started to lift weights and eat healthy food. As I got stronger and healthier, my mental health improved as well. Fast forward to 2020 and gym and diet were now a regular part of my life. I felt on top of the world smashing all of my gym and physique goals. I would live and breathe the gym. Gym videos, gym forums, bodybuilding books. But now I felt like there was something still lingering in the background. Something which I've been avoiding. Something left unaddressed. My finances are out of whack. So this is when I decided that something needed to change. So I put down my bodybuilding books and I decided to pick up some finance books. And so the first one I picked up was Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I thought that there were a lot of parallels between finance and fitness. And so with this in mind, I decided to delve off into the world and to apply what I learned in the gym to my personal finances. And for once in my life, it was finally time to start making some financial gains. So before we start, I do want to disclaim that none of the things that I'm going to be talking about is financial advice. And if you want to invest or do some of the things that I mentioned in this video, then I suggest you speak to a financial advisor and a tax accountant. And I'm not responsible for whatever shit you do, you know. If you go and buy a GameStop or something and lose all your money, don't go and sue me, all right? Okay, so now we got that out of the way, I want to go back to my story. So after reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, I did decide to read a couple more books just to, you know, delve into the world of finances even more. And I read things like Barefoot Investor and, you know, Money by Tony Robbins, uh, a lot of other books as well. And one of the first things I decided to do was to get invested in the stock market. And this was because of the low entry point, you can invest as little as $500 and as opposed to in real estate when you needed like a big deposit just to get into the game. So stock market really worked well for me in the beginning. And so I bought a ASX 200 stock which was Vanguard VAS and I purchased this in April 2020. And this was a perfect time as well because this was the start of the pandemic, everything started to crash so that was the perfect time to purchase. However, after purchasing this first stock, uh, I didn't really have a plan in mind. I purchased a few other random stocks here and there like, and I realized there was a problem here. And to tie this back with the lessons I learned from the gym is that it's always important to begin with the end in mind. So whether I'm trying to aim for a goal physique or trying to lift a specific weight, I always need to begin with the end in mind because that's going to determine my training regimen and my diet. With that being said, I really needed to self-reflect and ask myself, what am I trying to achieve here with this investing? And the answer that I came to is that I want to retire as soon as possible. And I'm guessing that's a lot of the answers that you guys would give as well. And so this is where I came across the 4% rule. And what's the 4% rule? I'm just going to read it out right now. So the 4% rule is the most popular rules of thumb in the science of retirement. The 4% rule is basically the safe withdrawal amount you can take out of your savings and investments each year without really affecting your capital gains and dividends on your investments. So what does this mean? I'll give you an example. Okay, so let's begin here. Say that I've got a portfolio value of $1 million. Historically speaking, the stock market goes up by an average of 7% per annum and inflation goes up by 3% per annum. So taking this into account, our real returns are going to be 4% per annum. So say that I've got a million dollars at the start of January 2022. By the end of the year, my $1 million would have turned into $1,040,000 if it went up by 4% per annum. And this $40,000 is what we can say is going to be what we live off in 2023. So we take that $40,000 out, we sell some shares, and so at the beginning of 2023, we're left with $1 million again. The cycle continues and by the end of 2023, in December, we're going to have $1,040,000 again, assuming a return of 4% per annum and the cycle goes on and so forth. Just a disclaimer here, this isn't taking into account your dividends. So it's going to be more income coming to you from your dividends, which I haven't put into this example. Anyway, we can see here that typically people will aim for the golden number of $1 million because it will allow them to live quite frugally off the $40,000 or so dollars. it will return them every year. So that's not too bad, $40,000 a year if you live frugally, that's quite doable. And so how do, how do I get to a million dollars? That sounds crazy, right? So let's 
take a step back and look at the numbers. Typing this up into compound interest calculator, so if I invest $2,000 a month over a span of 25 years, so that gives us a total amount of $1,063,482. And this is a pretty good number to achieve in 25 years, because typically they say that you work 40 years of your life. But with this plan, which the numbers show, you can retire at 50, shedding off 15 years of the original planned retirement. Also, I do want to show you some of my results with stock market investing, and it's not to brag or anything, I just want to show you that I do what I talk about. So this is a screenshot from last year, where I made 20% return on investment on my stock market investing. Now, I felt quite accomplished figuring this out and I thought to myself, okay, if I can find a plan that allows me to retire 15 years earlier at the age of 50, if I keep studying and looking for new ways, how much can I keep cutting this down to? So this leads me to my next chapter, which is chapter two, the get rich quick trap. So rolling high from the enthusiasm of stock market investing after seeing its potential, I unfortunately fell into a trap. And this is a trap which I believe that many of us have fallen into, which is the how to get rich quick online free no experience required trap so uh, this is where i got into the world of e-commerce drop shipping online stores crypto and all of those things and one of the first things i did was get into drop shipping because because of all the hype you see online of people make 30 grand a month from sales so i'm just going to give you a brief summary of what i did and this is from my blog i'm just going to scroll through it and show you guys you know i've done my market research um tried to find a product um you know, looked at analytics and all of those things. And this is the website that I made. It might be low resolution. These are just screenshots. I don't, I've on my old laptop, but this is essentially the website that I created, doing a lot of Photoshopping and um, really trying to learn how to market things. This is me trying to create the, the logos. Also, I paid for somebody to make some ads for me for the product that I chose. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I'm just gonna skim through this. I made my own social media account. Um, tried to get influencers to market my product. These are analytics they sent, and you know, so on and so forth. Anyway, yeah, I didn't want to go into it in too much detail, but I just wanted to show you that I actually did, you know, try to create stores. I also ordered stuff from AliExpress, uh, some cheap products, and I was actually trying to see if they were good enough for me to try to market and brand into something else. Uh, I also made an eBay store, so this is an example of like, you know, an ad that I put up. So another trap that I fell into was the whole crypto thing. So I'll, I even got myself a crypto wallet. I uh, bought some crypto at the peak when, you know, Elon Musk was doing his tweets and you know, everyone was just talking about it. Anyway, um, in this journey of trying to get rich quick, I did lose, you know, a couple grand. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I dropped like four grand on Bitcoin and then like probably a couple hundred to a grand on, you know, online stores but i did learn a lot from this to tie this back with the gym if you want to get stronger you need to progressively overload right so each week like i would add 2.5 kilos to my bench to try to hit whatever number i'm trying to hit i don't just jump in 10 kilo increments otherwise i'm going to injure myself it's the same thing here so if i want to be able to be an individual who's able to have the capacity to hold you know a lot of wealth then I need to grow into that person. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm not going to be, I didn't have the financial maturity. I didn't have the self-discipline to keep going. Like, for example, yeah, like I failed the first online store and I was like, okay, this stuff doesn't work. I give up. Or like, okay, crypto made me lose money. Okay, shit, I give up on that as well. Like, I didn't have the correct mindset. I definitely didn't have the capacity. I'm definitely not the person that was going to be able to handle wealth if I, you know, give up these small things. There are a lot, these are two quotes which I want to end this little chapter with, which really summarize my learnings. So the first one by Wes Watson, your level of success will never exceed your level of self-development. Another quote by Jim Rohn, which is, success is something you attract by the person you become. Anyway, after this whole round of you know mistakes and learnings, I finally stumbled across something which was a really good long-term wealth building vehicle. And that leads me to chapter three, which is my long-term wealth plan with real estate investing. 90% of millionaires become so through owning real estate. Andrew Carnegie. So I got into real estate investing for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons being is that I came across the Bigger Pockets podcast. Now this podcast is a podcast based in the States where they interview successful real estate investors who are on the way to financial freedom or who have already achieved financial freedom and financial independence. With every Bigger Pockets podcast that I listened to, I realized there was a common denominator between all of the guests that were interviewed and 
it was their thinking pattern. They all had the thinking pattern of an entrepreneur. When I was studying all the real estate investing, I came across Conrad Bobilak, who's an Australian investor. I think he's a mortgage broker as well. And I came across one of his videos, which shows the 10 year fast track to retirement. And in this diagram, he shows how getting your first investment property can be the gateway to getting your next and your next and so on and so forth until you end up with 10 properties in 10 years. And in the video, he talks about saying that at the end of the 10 years, you've got the option to say, you can, if you want to sell all your properties and run away with the cash, or you can also say, for instance, sell six properties and pay off the four and then live off the rental income of the four properties and so on and so forth. There's endless options there. And I know what you may be thinking. Maybe you're saying, oh yeah, this is just a guy selling the dream. You can't get 10 properties in 10 years and all those sorts of things. But what I can say is that after delving into the world of real estate investing, I networked with a lot of other real estate investors and I ended up meeting one investor who was sort of on the track to completing this goal in less than 10 years time. So with this investor who's now a good friend of mine, his name's Brandon and he's a founder of My Property Journey blog and he's also a buyer's agent. And when I first came across him, I was reading through his blog and I was like, man, he's like 25 and he's on property number seven. When I spoke to him recently and I brought up Conrad's 10 year plan, he said that he would possibly be able to achieve in the next few years. So up until now, you know, before I got into real estate investing, all I did was, you know, investing in the stock market. And while this was all good and I made some gains from that, uh, this was still only scratching the surface of financial literacy as I would find out. So as I further delved into real estate investing and I saw how my financial literacy is not up to scratch. And so that's when I decided to go back and hit the books. And that's when I got this book, uh, this book right here from Old Maid Connie, Conrad Bobilak. And I could say that it is absolutely fantastic. So if you're like me before real estate investing and you don't know much about say mortgage brokers, loan structures, you know, tax deductions, cash flow, uh, different lenders, trusts, all of those sorts of things. And this book's definitely for you. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description below where you can buy it. Anyway, after reading the book, it really brought to life the 10 year plan and allowed me to see through the lens of the numbers and actual, you know, tangibility or feasibility of how it could be accomplished. And so to talk about my personal story of how I applied what I've learned, I ended up purchasing two properties this year. So at the start of the year, I purchased in Queensland, which is my investment property number one. And I got this for below market value, uh, luckily, and I also purchased this in a rising market. So after three months time, after purchasing that property, it had between 50 to 100 grand in equity, which I was able to pull out and use as a down payment for my second property. And so it's quite interesting to see how things unfold when you find the plan and action it out. And so now if we compare this from my plan in chapter one, which was stock market investing, my original plan was to retire in 25 years time at the age of 50. And now with this new plan, I have found the way to possibly retire in 10 years instead. And I've learned a lot of lessons from this, which I want to tie back with the gym. So that my lessons from the gym was if you want to get stronger, then you hang out with the powerlifters. If you want to get bigger, you hang out with the bodybuilders. For this example, if I want to become a property investor, I hung out with other property investors. Also, I want to do say that if you want to be successful in something, you have to become obsessed. In the beginning, when I was into bodybuilding, I would be reading bodybuilding forums, but now I've replaced that with property forums. Where I was reading bodybuilding books, I replaced that with property books. So before when I was creating spreadsheets to track all my workouts, now I'm creating spreadsheets to track all my finances. And I do want to bring up lastly, before I reach my conclusion, I want to bring up this book which is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he talks about this thing called the burning desire. And that's essentially what I said before with obsession. If you want something, you have to become obsessed. You have to have a burning desire. You have to fill every ounce of your you know, being with whatever you're trying to pursue. So anyway, let's go to my next chapter, which is the conclusion. So like I said, with just all the studying and journey that I've went through, I've come up with a plan to cut my retirement age from the original 65 years of age to 50 years of age, now to 35 years of age. And I guess what I do want to say is that I think it would be foolish of me to just accept this reality, you know, sit back, kick my feet up and be like, okay, I'm going to retire in 10 years and accept that. I do feel an urge within me to cut it further, to keep optimizing my plan. And I do want to bring up a quote by Albert Einstein, which I really like, which is, when you stop learning, you start dying. To conclude, my journey to creating my blueprint, my plan, isn't over. It has only just begun. I believe in continuous learning and growing. 
to continuously push the boundaries of my faith, to exceed my old limiting beliefs and to reach higher heights. Right now I do have a 10 year plan with property. However, I cannot say for sure I know how my path will unfold because I will always strive to look for new ways to optimize and improve this plan. Whether I decide to use my equity to purchase more properties or use the equity towards a new business venture, it is entirely up to me and only time will tell. I will always look for new ways to learn and grow as an investor and as an entrepreneur. And as I do, so will my capacity for wealth. It's about the journey and not the destination. To all my brothers and sisters out there on the path to self-development, striving to improve for yourself and for the people around you, to you I say, we're all gonna make it bras. See you in the next video.